Hello everybody and welcome to class. In the last video you learned all about how to set up a one object still life. The main thing we worked with was the light. We created shadows that have hard edges and today we're going to paint our value study. So let's begin. I'm starting out with a half sheet of 140 pound paper and I'm going to leave the paper on the block. Uh, I'm going to begin by drawing out my still life. Use a regular number two pencil or an HB if you have one and press lightly with your pencil so that if you need to erase you can um, or if you don't erase it and the line stays there your paint can possibly cover up those pencil lines and you won't see them. For this value study we're going to use a monochromatic color scheme. So mono means one and chromatic means color. So just select one color. I chose indigo and we already know how to lighten or darken our paint. You add a little bit more water to lighten it and a little bit less water to darken it. And now we're just going to learn how to apply that to an actual painting. Test your colors first. So either off to the side of your painting or you can use some scrap water paper, watercolor paper. I'll do mine off to the side here. I'm making a scale from light to dark. So if I add a lot of water, the color will be light. And if I add less water, the color will be dark. Um, you can do the same and see if you can get about five or six values this way. Okay, so as for strategy, where am I going to start? How am I going to paint this painting? Um, you can do it really any way that you like. Um, there's a couple that I like to mention that have been helpful for other artists. And one is to go from your lightest value start there work your way to dark um, that's because if you need to uh, change a value up like if you paint your painting and it's dry and then you realize oh I need to change something uh, you can always paint another layer over a light layer um, to make it darker but it's harder to go the other way um, so if you were to start out dark it's harder to make it lighter from there so that's why that's one of the strategies is to start light and then just work your way for to dark. Uh, the other strategy I like to mention here is to start from your background and work your way forward to your foreground. So you would start with your background. For me, it's this white uh, foam board. And then I would work to my middle ground, so uh, the cube. And then I would work to the foreground, which is the tabletop surface. So those would be like the three steps. Once you have a scale, you can begin to assign your values. I can tell right away that the lightest value that I'm going to paint is going to be this top part of the background. Um, so I used a white piece of foam board um, and we know it's a really bright white, but um, once I put my lighting on it, it actually grayed it down a bit. So rather than using just the white of the paper, I'm going to try to mix up my lightest value of indigo that I can and then use that to paint the whole background. So for this painting, we are working with wet paint on dry paper. Um, so it's important to keep track of your bead and the bead is the part of what you're painting that is still very wet. So if I were to tilt my paper and all of the water rushes to that side where all that water collects and forms like a little puddle, that is your bead. And you want to just keep track of that bead and spread it out as much as you can. Um, you want to try to coat the paper as evenly as you can. The more even your coverage is while you're applying it, the more even it's going to look once it's dry. We already worked on color bleeds. If you put a color next to a color, they bleed into one another. But for this exercise, exercise 11, um, we're working with hard edges. Um, so we worked our light in the beginning when we were setting up our still life to work in such a way so that each plane of our still life is a different value. So while I'm waiting for my background to dry, I can't really paint anything that's touching it uh, because I don't want the values to bleed into one another. I want crisp edges. So I can't paint anything on the cube. I cannot paint the tabletop. So I'm going to work on this cast shadow next. And I'm going to say that when I compare the actual still life value to this value scale that I painted down here. 
Uh, I think it's probably pretty close to maybe a four. Um, so I'm going to mix up a four value and I'm going to paint it in. A third strategy is the one I'm using here. And it's to work all around your painting and in no particular order and get as many areas painted in at the same time. So it's areas that aren't touching each other. And that way you could spend less time waiting for the paint to dry. All right, so I cannot really paint anything else because both of the areas that I've already painted are still wet. So I'm going to go take a little break. I'm going to come back when both areas are completely dry. Okay, both areas are completely dry and I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the right side of the cube next and it looks like it's a four value. But because my paints have been sitting here while I was waiting for the background to dry, my paints have dried up a little bit. The water has evaporated so there's less water in each well and there's still the same amount of paint. Uh, so each value that's already mixed has changed in this time and they're actually darker because there's less water. Um, so I'm going to add a little more water back into the ones that I think are closest to the value that I need. And I know it's really hard to see when you're looking at the paint in the palette. Uh, they all pretty much look the same. So you still have this little test area here or your scrap piece of paper. Once you think you have the value, just test it again. So if I'm going for this four value, I'm going to try to mix that up as best I can and then paint a little swatch near the four and just compare the two. And once I have it, I'm going to fill it in. Okay, so the background wasn't completely dry uh, because the cube just bled into the background. That's right, let's move on. Let's let this layer dry and come back when it's really dry. All right, so this time I'm gonna check to make sure it's really dry with the back of my hand. Um, you can let it sit for a while and you can notice how the color has lightened and it looks dry, but to really tell you can touch it with the back of your hand and if it feels cool to the touch, that means it's still wet. But if it feels room temperature, then it's dry and ready to go. All right, so from here, I'm just gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit for the next few minutes and then I'm gonna come back and just show you one last thing. Uh, but really pay attention to your values. Make sure that what you're mixing is matching up with what you see. Be sure to let the paper completely dry in between layers and enjoy the process. All right, back to regular speed. I noticed when I was painting the tabletop that the cast shadow was not dark enough. So all you need to do is put a second coat of paint on top. So I was already painting the tabletop, so I had that light indigo color already mixed up and painting right around it. So I just went directly on top of the cast shadow and you know, darkened it slightly. And then I'm just going in with a drier brush so I'm dabbing my brush on the paper towel to get it a little bit drier and get some of the paint off and I'm using this drier brush to remove some of that tabletop color because it was really really wet and um, that's just a way to remove it and to avoid um, what little water spots all over the place 
All right, here we are, the painting's all dry, um, and I'm noticing that both the left and the right side of the cube are not as dark as I'd like them to be, and they're definitely not as dark as they are in the still life. Um, and so I'm just gonna go over both of them and see if I can darken them up. Still not dark enough, so I'm going to go for a third coat. And here it is, this is the final piece. Um, and again, this was a wet on dry painting and it was a value study. Um, before I end this video though, I do wanna show you what this painting would look like if we were to have painted it on wet paper. So I'm gonna to try to do everything the same. I'm gonna draw it out lightly with pencil. I'm going to figure out which values go where. The only thing I'm gonna change is the paper. I'm gonna wet it first and hopefully this will show why it's so important to use dry paper for sharp edges and then save the wet paper for your blended edges. You don't have to do this last part. Uh, I did it just to show you that you can paint the exact same painting and get such a different result just by changing up one thing. And that was wetting the paper. It's important to know what you're looking for. So if you're looking for hard edges, go with dry paper. If you're looking for soft edges, go with wet paper. Let me know what questions you have. In our next class, we're gonna change up the lighting in our still life so that we can get soft edges. And I'm gonna show you how to blend those edges on wet paper. Let me know how you're doing and I'll see you next time.